forward to you. Hi, everyone. I'm Kola. Stands for Nikola. I work for Positive and uh, prepare ML there. Vanya Ivan Khudishov is going to join me shortly. It's more about security and some theory. He's going to talk about it together with me. And together <clears throat> we'll be talking about attack generation and the use of GAN. First of all, introduction, then short story about some theory, formal grammar, this hardcore thing, passing an injection point uh, and the trees, and then WF, WF, bypassing, and now it prevents, helps us prevent these attacks, to be precise. And uh, the actual ML fuzzy experiment and some conclusions hopefully will follow. Why do we need this? We would like to be a, ahead of the attackers. It seems to me that when we work in security, we always lag behind, and uh, we are lagging behind at all times. It would be very nice to be just one step ahead, be able to prevent these attacks, whatever the attack may be. And it's very nice to have some kind of a tool that helps us generate these attacks when needed. So it's very nice to have uh, an ability to deeper understand uh, these attacks, uh, look for bypasses of various defense tools and complete and enhance detectors' uh, capabilities. This particular presentation and the approach we pursue is all about all these. Now I would like to disclose it a little bit, make a spoiler. I think ML may actually help us prevent different attacks with the scotch, uh, I mean, uh, adhesive tape attachments uh, that we can very, very quickly analyze as experts and make conclusions. And what kind of injection attacks types are we talking about? We're talking about web attacks, all these injection attacks types. I'm showing you some of them on the screen. We're going to speak about SQLs, uh, SQL inject injections, but it would be very nice to repeat it for X accesses on both client and server side. And what's uh, SQL? SQL is uh, in insertion of an injection of an SQL query and uh, hack some sensitive data from the database, modify database, make everything feel bad. Uh, in other words, Vanya is going to carry on uh, with some practice, um, showing you some case studies. And now a bit of theory from me. We have a web application in the depth um, of the web application, we have the SQL request that runs and um, with the web client or STP request, it pulls and um, pulls the information from the database and makes everyone happy. But uh, some kind of a bad person makes an injection to that query, which may obviously make us feel very sad. So what helps us here is the web application firewall, WF, between client and web, and helps us these uh, helps us uh, nip in the bud with all these payloads and injections and say, don't go there, stop here make it legitimate and uh, make the user uh, happy and uh, make sure the user's query passes through and a non-legitimate query, query rejects. Everybody knows that there are plenty of uh, vulnerability scanners available and plenty of uh, mm, 
SQL code modification tools are available. Even if you check it out in GitHub uh, and check out the repositories, there are plenty of them, by the way. Even an SQL map comes up there and uh, different custom modifications. Uh, people try to come up with their own homegrown apps, uh, home own solutions, homegrown solutions, scanners. And uh, another one, WFA mole, uh, is the thing that is familiar to some of you. But for me, it was a new thing for me as an ML person. This mole modifies payloads uh, briefly and uh, adds uh, slashes, tabs, uh, uh, spaces, and if there is a, some kind of a regular inserted in depth, uh, it seems like that it may help you bypass, bypass security in, sim in simple cases. They are not very interesting to us, but they do exist. And SQL map story goes like this. The attack classes and SQL injections can be split in two classes. And uh, some of these attacks um, are included in the SQL map for grammar, for parsing. Ivan is going to talk about. Ivan? Hi there. I just want to say hi there again, but uh, it's the first time that I say hi to all of you. So it's not again. Uh, just bear with me for a moment. You have to bear with me a little bit more before I know how to press the buttons here on the remote control. Anyway, uh, a few words about this uh, goal that we would like to achieve. Uh, the goal we would like to achieve is make sure that we teach WAF pr uh, protect from injections. It's an ambitious goal, but any ambitious goal starts uh, from the first step. And uh, we wanted to try machine learning uh, to generate vectors. As soon um, as there is a question about um, teaching something, do something, uh, we just need to learn the subject ourselves. If we take a look at uh, the injection vector uh, with the eyes of an expert, for example, on the payload, uh, it's the injection vector. And uh, how does an analyst perceive it? An analyst perceives it uh, as a word. Uh, in a sentence, uh, it's not just a combination of symbols, but something having sense. And in this case, uh, the vector is a syntax. It's not just the syntax. It's the syntax uh, that uh, helps us uh, get it inside another syntax in order not to repeat we just need to identify whether we've achieved the goal or not, whether we made sure that WAF generates something new or not. We just go back uh, to some theory. Uh, using it, uh, we'd like to find out whether we've been able to achieve something or not. But before we do some studying, we need to understand what we have at the moment. Uh, Nikolai enumerated scanners and what they are capable of doing and uh, how ex exactly they do that. And all of the activities, all of the actions of all of the scanners can be actually combined uh, with the word fuzzing. That's what they do. They do fuzzing. And what we would like them to do, uh, we would like to have a kind of a black box which would help us generate all possible injection vectors. If we do achieve that, if we can generate all of the injection vectors, we can guarantee that we can be injection protected. Theory, in theory, we can generate any and all possible injection vectors because we have grammar. Um, injection vec vectors have uh, the language. Uh, for them, we have some grammar. And uh, for them, uh, we have created it. And we can generate 
random vectors, but it's a very pretentious goal, I would say. And the first um, step here in this direction is just moving from Fuzzin to this global goal. We just need to attempt and uh, try and create uh, and teach and get uh, a model from somewhere. The model which will do everything which phasers, but uh, tries to do it a little bit better. And uh, can we actually get any closer to the desired goal that I have described? I would like to say a couple of words uh, about the terms that we would like to use here. When we speak about parsing and about the syntax, here when we do the analysis, uh, two stages do spring up, and uh, that's what I would like to do. The first thing is just in the normal, in the normal language. We single out the words, we do not perceive this idea symbol by symbol. We single out the words and we combine the words and the words make sense. And uh, the component uh, creates um, tokens, splits uh, the inflow into the so-called to tokens, and then parser makes um, table links out of them, out of that. Uh, we're going through these branches of the tree. We will see it. And uh, here, what does this injection stand for? Uh, how do we describe injection as an attack? Um, what we need to do here is just to set a template, a syntax, in a sentence. Uh, in a sentence uh, where we put user's input, token, and parsing will help us make this tree. And one of the nodes of the tree would be the node where the syntax would fit in. If the user input is legal, we get one token. If it's illegal, we'll get multiple tokens. But uh, we cannot judge by the total number because the vectors of the injection may show that uh, part of the tokens uh, may disappear and uh, they will turn into one. So what can application firewall do here? They need to interpret the input vector as the syntax of a tree. I can put it in different injections. Uh, uh, different injections. Uh, here, you just need to understand the entire scale. Well, it's a very, very serious um, computational task, uh, so we would like to make it simpler. Can we really achieve anything by applying this method, uh, by generating the attacks? Can we actually provide protection from the injections? Not exactly, because like in any theory, we uh, have some unpredictabilities and uncertainties. So we just need to make sure that we simplify this. And uh, what can be done and what is being done just to bypass the application firewall? In formal grammar, we, we can um, come up with fake words and uh, cheat on WAF that will not perceive them as words and will not identify this syntax as uh, an injection vector. And the more syntax uh, I used here semantically, it's a little bit more than that. Uh, and number four I'm showing here is everything else, all the things that uh, do spring up inevitably in a very complicated and complex technical solution like web application firewall. I would like to come up with a few examples. Um, uh, some of the recent ones that I had seen previously, if you take this SQL language and um, if you are a little bit familiar with it and you understand that it's not uh, the language, it's a bunch of dialects, you'll be able to find quite a lot in there. For instance, in MS SQL, 
this number can be shown as the backslash and uh, a currency sign, a dollar sign, and this dollar sign will be also interpreted as a single number if shown separately. If uh, application firewall does not expect that, uh, it will not define injection vectors and uh, root in Postgres. Seems like they have become obsolete so far, but uh, the previous ones proved that it, it did work. And um, factorials, uh, some of them suit one dialect, and it's not uh, certain that, that they will suit another one. And in Oracle, it make uh, it separated with spaces, so it does not look like a, a very primitive. Um, reg and uh, comes up with warnings if there is some smart analysis going on which uh, helps you avoid uh, false positives without proper tokenization not making sure that one token can be split in parts with symbols uh, we will have these bypasses obviously as for syntax uh, we can experiment here, and how can we by bypass WAF? It, it, in terms of the trees, it will look like exceeding the depth uh, of the tree. We can insert uh, more and more branches there, s showing that uh, whatever mechanism is used here, we can use special keywords. In MSQL, there is ODBC. Um, expressions um, that can be inserted and without the fully fledged parsing solutions some expressions like that are not very easy to recognize are impossible to recognize with obfuscation uh, used uh, which is a very well known method uh, we know that uh, if we work with syntax <coughs> There was an attempt uh, to cheat on WAF in terms of making sure which uh, string we need to get it, get it analyzed. If we obfuscate a string, if we put it together with the use of the symbols, we can do so. All these uh, methods are very well known. I'm just making sure that all these uh, methods will not work if in the application firewall there is an honest and transparent parsing happening with all of the injections are checked and verified whether the statement is correct in the language used or not. So what is not uh, mentioned here in the presentation is that there are some general things uh, that uh, WAF is responsible for. There are some limits set, for example, a limit for HTTP uh, requests. Oh, there may be some HTTP requests uh, coded, and uh, some of the vectors can be hidden inside uh, the codes. Uh, so such things uh, are not detected, but if we have uh, vectors uh, in the WAF input, those that will be put in the injection put and uh, WAF will perform the parsing, then it works. What was it uh, all about with the experiment of ours? What did we actually want to achieve with the use of some basic injection vectors uh, of the DB? that I'm showing here on this slide, and uh, they are shown in red. In each tree, each tree symbolizing the context, and these are the injections, and uh, we get a tree out of it that would generate the vectors that are not trivial, and they're not trivial, non-trivial, and not equivalent, uh, having a different type of a token, in any 
of a node or a different uh, non-equivalent type of a tree. That's what we would like to achieve. And then Nikolai will continue and he will explain how it actually works. I exactly. And uh, what we would like to get? Uh, well, we would like to get the vectors to make sure that uh, these conditions of, are fulfilled, that Ivan was explaining. And uh, in 2014, a good fellow came up with again a, a solution. It seems like that this suits us. What does it actually suit us? Initially, it was all about uh, uh, the pictures, uh, the images. Then it was adapted uh, to sound and it definitely works with the text and our vectors are also text so let us just uh, use GAN to generate the text and uh, GANs are generative adversarial networks uh, discriminator helps us uh, discriminate distinguish real data samples from synthesized samples and generate restraint to map noise sample to a synthetic data sample that can fool the discriminator and they both uh, always rival each other so to speak mm. so what did we take we took uh, the vectors of web attack from web injection we added some custom cases we found uh, so we used our own expertise and this is what it looks like we just mentioned that, and uh, this is the data. So it seems like there were approximately 64,000 unique attack vectors. And we just uh, put them inside GAN. Not an ordinary one, of course. Uh, so we had to think that this data has uh, text nature, so we need to have GANs that uh, support the text. And on the Internet, there are plenty of uh, solutions uh, available uh, that uh, they are all about TensorFlow. But it didn't work out with TensorFlow somehow with us. Uh, so TextGAN by a PyTorch, however, worked. That's the framework. Those guys, uh, uh, PyTorch, uh, uh, had quite a lot of original papers on archive and it's a powerful framework. Uh, uh, there is a bit of a um, mishmash there, but we can use it, we can actually use it. And uh, we took a few samples and we used our data and this is what it turned out to be. This is the architecture of a sequential Ghana, of a sequential GAN. We can get a generator, we can get discriminator, and this enforcement learning when we would want to be appraised by the discriminator, we would like to teach and train generator by these samples, uh, really works as magic. So what did we actually want to achieve? We wanted to try and use n-grains. Uh, why use uh, words? Uh, we just need to generate these, and it seems like it's going to skyrocket. Get tokenized instead of uh, get tokenized. We generate it, put it into modal, we froze the discriminator, we defrosted uh, the generator. Somehow it worked. But you can still see something there. You see unions, you see selects, so you see, you see some keywords. <coughs> some keywords from SQL, so looks like it works, and you can dig deeper. So what do we see? We can clean the data, we can remove the outliers using clustering and come back to words remove stop words, long hashes, and that was uh, creating, you know, some, some strange things with generation. So, 
The guys have improved the process so much that training the model is very simple. You just, you, you know, push a couple of buttons, tune the parameters, choose the metrics you'd like to optimize, and uh, it's quite primitive. And with machine translation, if you want to compare you know, one string with another string, then there's some window for you to see that some metrics work and something is happening. But, you know, launching the epochs and tuning the model, uh, you know, seeing the loss drop and accuracy grow, blue getting better. With each epoch, and it should have been good. And, and it even uh, it even happened to be good. Uh, the wrong slide. So let's go to, to vectors. The, the, the idea that I wanted to conduct here is that we were successful at generating some interesting vectors that were not in the training uh, training set. It did something. But of course, there was quite a lot of vectors, and to decide which one is right, what is interesting, what is not, there's a lot of pain. And the expert decision, some you know, intense look, helps you understand what went wrong and what went right. And Ivan will talk to you more about this. Thank you, thank you, Nikolai. So the results are quite good. There's a lot of vectors, but most of them are not full-scale injections. Some of them are, but some fragments look like something we could use. It's hard to say that we have found something that we never detected. Unfortunately, each and every vector was an old one, not, and we could not move further you know, as, as researchers. But the idea that was described, uh, getting the new vectors that were not there in the training set. Look, I learned. I'm saying the right words. I think this was a success. So you can classify this. Um, the, the nested expressions are easy to generate to be generated by uh, ordinary fuzzers. But the second case, for example, is an interesting because you can get here an interesting part, removing the details. This is the injection vector. If you add a closing, a closing bracket, so some comment symbol, either the, the sharp sign for, for my scale or minus minus, then this is an injection vector. So something that is quite close to, to an injection vector. It's, it's put like this. Uh, this is a standard SQL request that is present in all the web applications. And by looking uh, for places where you can, you know, get that vector, we found this structure. In the middle, you have an injection vector that was in the database, and its structure, its tree-like stru structure is different from what, from what we got in the end. And here is a full-blown injection vector. If the web application is not protected by some specific tools or not created in a specific way, here is how 
the template looks for with the injection point. You don't need to dive too deep into this. Of course, you can, you know, define the selection tree, but for the template that we, template that we use, that is simple. What I wanted to highlight is that if we substitute the token, of course, okay, but if we add the injection vector from there, this is a tree. The trees are quite simple to, to digest. If we draw them in a similar way, with nodes being like this. So you can see that this tree is the injection the injection vector that we had, and this one is what we got. So it differs from the original one. So we had some interesting findings with the new vectors. So to conclude what I can say, I can say that decent injection protection can be guaranteed if you use either a protected application or if your application is vulnerable, then you need to use Web app, web app firewalls that are based on the formal grammars. Use the all the processes to find real injection vectors. As an example to what happens in the real life, I, I mentioned the third one uh, for an, uh, as a protection uh, mechanism for another case. It uses tokens. It's the simplest step you can take. And it's used only when you have additional information. If you don't have any additional information, then we have to use both tokenizing and parsing and use it together. Or you can aim for a more global tool and try to find the injection grammar build the injection grammar, same as in lead detection example. And the drawback here is that it has to do a lot with parsing and it takes a lot of time. Thus the issue with its with their usage is to how we can try to make it work fast. The portability is also an issue, but yeah, there is an issue with the portability. Writing your own code, your own parsers and tokenizers is not easy. And if you use generators for tokenizers and parsers, they can be incompatible. But what can we offer? What is the way to go to move to ensure that WAFs protect us from injections? You need to use the layered approach. And I think it's, it's the right way, really. I don't know about the current WAFs. Their structure and way of working is usually hidden, but if you use layer the approach, then you can get both advantages. Processing the legal traffic fast, and if you see the injection, then by using the analysis, the vector analysis, we can use the, the most appropriate tools to analyze it. Using ML is very interesting, especially with different languages and injection types. And I think this approach has shown that the vectors can be really 
done well, and the analytics should be taken into consideration. So here are the perspectives. Maybe Nikolai will add some words. But with that, I'd like to conclude. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Thank you indeed. Uh, Nikita Kroganov from Yandex. Some questions. First, uh, why didn't you succeed with TensorFlow? And the second question. Did you look at playing with GAN, uh, changing the strings, the OP codes, the bytes in the malware, just to look at how the, uh, you can bypass the AV solutions? Maybe, you know, uh, try to uh, change the generation rules in CM. And uh, with Sandbox working on Drag Wolf, why wouldn't you use dynamic analysis and generate some extra vectors on uh, how to execute malware and maybe try to, you know, push that idea? Thanks. Well, you said a lot of, you've said a lot of things. So, first question is TensorFlow or PyTorch? PyTorch, because TensorFlow is no longer TensorFlow. And it's easier for us to work with PyTorch. This is subjective opinion. So you talk about malware. We live in a different world. Let's agree on what malware is. We don't have any sandboxes. We have just web traffic. We don't have any malware. We have HTTP requests that we can use to put some bad words there and get some, you know, bad results. So. You can put an HTTP request and uh, by putting the file there. So you look at a t TCP and you get all the bytes, malware, and CEP. That's it. We talk about different goals. You talk more about shells and binaries, but we only talk about SQL injections. And uh, the data is attack vectors in the context of applications. Yes. You can load shells. We know how to do it. So this is not on the topic of the presentation. Yeah, just just fun to know. Thank you. Thank you for presentation, Dmitry uh, Chesnikov from Sberbank. Uh, on the floor, did you try to uh, analyze the performance and maybe brute force it? Maybe create a simple parser and generate using the parser. Well, yeah, it's uh, in the beginning of the presentation. So, uh, classic thing. The task we had is to was to find the vectors we never saw. If we have a lib detection base that knows everything about everyone, and if we launch a scanner, then our protection tools know everything about it, and we will not see anything new. So the question is about the performance, right? Or what? So you, you've, you found a huge dictionary, right? And you could, you know, brute force your way. Well, yeah, if you have many trees, many injection points, and put everything into every place, then it might be painful, yeah. But whether this can be, you know, run through SQL syntaxes and uh, checked in practice. I don't know. Well, we have our own eye. We have our own expert opinion. We can validate the results using our eyes. Second, we don't want to just use some simple attack vectors. We want to get the new vectors. This is the difference. Well, I, th I see. I think that uh, by by just brute forcing this, we might get more options. It's not the question of quality. No. The new injection point for fuzzing will be the same that we saw previously, and here we have a new tree. 
but we won't know uh, until we until we try, right? If you push, uh, if you, you know, touch the black box from the outside, we have feedback. We can validate the results and uh, understand what's going on. Maybe I did not succeed in, in explaining this. But then the task is, is easier, right? So, yeah, you know, just using brute force is more effective. Why would it be more effective? We are talking about generating the samples that are valid in terms of the syntaxes, and the brute force would not give you this result. So we brute force, we run through SQL syntaxes. If the syntaxes works, then uh, we go to to the checks. Did you try to, to maybe compare the performance, especially on volume, on huge volumes? Okay, so let me try to understand the question and reply to it. Performance-wise, the amount of uh, vectors generated, we will, um, we can go the grammar way, create some injection vector grammar and. Uh, try to create a generator that covers all the grammar. So we take the grammar and by using some expert opinion we will understand what are the the nodes and create an application that will generate something for us. Yes, this will be complete uh, exhaustive search, but we can put all the options there. And I think what you meant here is that you want to get a tool that will generate more knowledge. So the idea that you gave has all the, all the knowledge and we can get everything from there. But if we have some training sample, as I see the task, is whether we can get more knowledge from the, the current approach. Can we create a brute force tool? Sure. Can we create a, a tool that will generate all the possible options for us? Yes, absolutely. But practical compatibility is a question. Can we use those tools in the future to, you know, put them into the defense tools or attack tools? Well, for us, it's more of a defense question. If we don't know how to attack, probably it will be hard to, you know, to defend. So in terms of the defense, we need to get the understanding of the vector. So if we can generate all the possible vectors and get more knowledge, get more information, then we have some chance that we'll be able to to react. So we are limited by the grammar. If you do exhaustive search based on predefined rules, then where do you get them? And where do you get the original big dictionary? Then you either don't have an exhaustive search, because GitHub can GitHub can not have some exotic cases. And can we can we put all the ex, ex, um, all the possible tokens that can be in all the possible dialects. I don't know. Theoretically, yes, but in practice, no. Uh, 
sorry, can we maybe move this to yeah to to, to an offline discussion? Sure, Andrews Burbank. Two questions. Use the GANs, so basic metrics of uh, language models. No custom metrics for the discriminator, right? Yeah, we used what we had. Sigan, lead GAN. The GANs are uh, no, a magic box of, of ML. It's very hard to understand where to stop. The pain you are talking about, I definitely felt that pain, and it was hard to understand. 100 epochs, 150 epochs, you know, you get this back or that back. And it's very, very hard to find the edge, find the end. And at some point in time, I just push it to Ivan, and he says, it's okay, it's not okay. Then I do some other you know, motions, and he says, well, it's better this way. And so here's how, here's how it looks. Second question, you showed how the tree is broad, the, broadened during the injection. And how does this compare with, uh, you know, normal requests, between normal requests and... Yeah, if we pass two graphs, that might be an interesting thought, yeah. Vladimir Yelisev, Infotex. My question is about the tree you showed there. Can you yeah, show the slide with the tree? So when we start with... Uh, with the root. So, select statement. This root is in the application itself, right? And the red thing is the result of the in injection, right? Yes. So does the wow well, has the access to the web application? No, it doesn't. So how do you parse the syntaxes then? If you start from the arbitrary point in this SQL, if you don't have the root, if you have the root, you build all the glamour and this works perfectly well, but you don't have the root. Correct, a great question and an interesting problem. If we talk in terms of the scientific terms, then if we build a language for injection vectors, it will be context dependent. Congratulations. Thanks. So here you have some difficulties. The question was about ML was why do we try to use ML here? To build such a language is is a difficult thing. And to have the capability to have a parser from this language. You can you can have the language, the contents is dependent language. But to build a parser is is, is an issue, yes. And also, you have an issue in practice with the case you've described. The balance between false positives and false negatives can look like an injection. And currently, there's no scientific solution for for this. So it would be interesting to, to think about this, right? Yeah, the question uh, I wanted to ask you is why do you limit yourself to just this uh, SQL? Because you can use shell and other things. The syntax is very different and uh, you get into even a tougher situation, not only with uh, free context, but also in uh, uh, in free tokens. I understood the issue. Thank you. Thank you indeed. And this is an interesting direction. Hi, the question I have is, is it a research 
issue, a research question? Because you said there's you need an expert opinion on pretty much every outcome of this GAN. And this can help you build the base, but you cannot push this into some some automation. The issue is quite simple. Ivan now knows everything that's happened, and he will be able to create decent rules so that our protection tools are better. Okay, so it helps the expert, but it does not automate, right? Yes, this is a research. You said that uh, this is research work, and this is really something we don't aim to be generating final results. Thanks. Hello. Andrew Mironenko, uh, and I wanted to ask a simple question. You got the vectors, the new vectors, used uh, uh, reinforced learning. Did you give them to pen testers? Does this injection work? No, this is not. So for the vectors we got, we tried. Uh, I, did, I did not know. Check this on Docker, but uh, my experience is enough to say that this will work and this will not. So the things that were found by the machine learning, not all of them will work. Yeah, you said there are some good ones. Not all of them will work perfectly well, but if you you know tweak them a little bit, they will. They will. Thank you. Thanks much. Great presentation and uh, a comment from my side. If you continue the brute force discussion, I can help the colleagues with a couple of Microsoft reports that show that if you use the same hardware, the same um, computational power, then you will be able to get the uh, same type of uh, results. So first uh, question is, why did you have that you know, little size of the training set? And uh, I think that this volume is not enough to to work with GANs. Even you know, 2014 publications have much bigger volume. Maybe this is the the reason uh, for not that many results. And uh, the idea here is also that uh, it's not a text; it's a graph, and uh, then this might reduce the the train the the needed training set size. So, uh, could you maybe, you know, try to use a bigger training set? No, we did not. We know how to do it. There's uh, an idea on how we can represent text as a graph, and uh, the guys from Sberbank uh, also told us about this, and this is cool. Why did the, as Ivan said, uh, some, you know, uh, common signs and uh, this works. Why, why did, did we decide to, to try it with this amount of, of training data? We just wanted to. And another question is, or maybe an idea, besides the abstract discriminator, you have a discriminator which is the product which you can use to push all that output there and as it is the uh, the useful data, then maybe it's an interesting feedback when, especially when the product does not consider this an injection, because for the generator this might help train it. And yes, we had some ideas in a different type of research. We did a similar case. It was all about uh, injections, but a wider uh, wider example where the product uh, was used there for teaching purposes. If we insert it here, if we apply it here, that'd also be a boost. And uh, we'd want to go for reinforcement learning, uh, which we're going to treat very nicely and uh, treat it with carrot, not the stick. Uh, two final questions, please, and we need to wrap it up. Uh, Hello, colleagues. I'm Artyom Menisev from Mazhansky Academy. There was a question when this colleague from Sberbank was talking. You took this whole pipeline, started from data processing, ending with the creation of the model. 
Uh, so that would be an idea just to take um, a model which would be ready, uh, GTP, root GTP, uh, and train it uh, with the use of your own data. Of course, you take the um, take the regular text. Uh, um, your solution here is formal. Uh, maybe we should try the one that I'm asking about. Sometimes the model that you described, we give it a try and give it a touch. Okay, I understand. And sometimes all of the data sets are foreign made. So, did you have any notion of sharing this data with the community? Actual, the actual data set I was talking about was open. The leap injection was open. So, cat asterisk uh, SQL, just one set and uh, get similar results. And uh, that part, which was ours, uh, unfortunately, we cannot share it. It's our own knowledge. We realized uh, the, that in products, and that's where we've got our expertise. Yes, I would like to add a few words about uh, publishing the injections. Uh, it's a sensitive question. We'd uh, be publishing it, and uh, but what about if these uh, battled uh, injections? Uh, it's good that this idea is correct, and we just need to uh, do it. But by request, uh, there was a research, uh, an organization, which would request uh, data sets, uh, and we get a response. We get a response from there. I think it's an interesting idea. The actual idea of sharing it uh, sounds sensible, but uh, I'm not competent enough to answer this question that we are capable of doing. So I think it should be someone in a higher position. We'll think about data sets and uh, we'll think about uh, it and uh, share it with you next time. I think uh, the time is up. Just a couple of minutes to select two best questions, and that's it. I like this question and the, the actual idea from this person from Zber, from Zberbank, about the trees, and uh, the price goes to you. Thank you. And I really like two questions. Uh, this guy here who left uh, from there, but he already has a T-shirt, so... And uh, then I would like to give it to you. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Uh, all right, I would like to thank everyone. And in just one minute, uh, we carry on with one final uh, presentation for today in our breakout session. Thank you. See you in